Hey, it's time for Tech Talk. And we got lots of stuff to talk about tonight. In your tech update, we're talking about what? Mac well, we minis? Got, and yeah, we talk about the Mac Mini that you just got. Uh, have you been pwned? Uh, we want to know. We talk about the UR12, Skype. It died on Valentine's Day. Darn. Why? And maybe what kind of portable SSD drive you might want to get. All right. And all your questions. That so you, many questions. That have been sent in to the guys at VOBS.TV. So RX, stay tuned. You name it. Twisted Wave tech stuff at the wazoo DSers, you name it more than you can handle stay tuned so coming can... up right now two men twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere together in one place george whittem the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. And we're back. And it's now what time. are we doing? We're doing tech talk. Oh, tech talk. Okay. Tech talk. Tech talk. I can actually straighten the microphone. Oh, isn't like that. that nice? I know. Don't ever do that in the studio. Never though. touch the microphone. No. Yeah. Let the union guys do that. <laughs> uh, Get your freaking arm broke. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, What's new? We're going to talk about first your tech update because you got a lot of stuff you want to cover here. Like the new Mac Mini, which I have actually pulled the trigger on. Yes, it is. It is, and full, I know you it have too. For real, I, I haven't. It's still you in my shop. You haven't. No, you thought you you bought one because you thought <laughs> I, bought, I bought one. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The problem is, I found a mountain bike I want, and that's kind of distracting me right now from buying Priorities. a computer. How's the sound on that? <laughs> it sounds great. Man. <laughs> my sister got a car. I got a computer. No. Um. So no, it's the the Mac Mini 2018. It's it's for real. Tell I mean, us I why I, it's for real. Well, I, I mean, I finally got to set up one in a studio, having it up and running, doing voiceover studio work, and it it's it does what you want it to do. It boots up fast. It launches applications quickly. It it runs really well. It's got um, all the right ports on it. You know, it's got actual USB ports, which wow. a lot of new Macs don't have. Right? This one does. It has at least um, one. It's got two USB <laughs> yeah, yeah. three ports on it. It's got four Thunderbolt four. Or three ports that are also USB. You just need a little adapter, but it's got those. Um, but another thing is it's quiet. Right. So normally it, the real test of a Mac is that when you first turn it on and it starts updating a million things, the fan goes berserk, right? right. Yeah. This thing is still relatively quiet. Like it's, I don't, I wouldn't say I could have it sitting right <laughs> underneath my voiceover mic, uh, you know, in a good studio, but it's nowhere near as loud as the older Mac minis. I mean, they, they would, you know, you it's really, like a hair dryer. It is like a little mini <laughs> yeah, hair dryer. <laughs> Have you heard of what those are for? <laughs> you can, and, and it works as a hair dryer. You hold it up right. Um, yeah, in fact, it's, I have an old Mac Mini uh, right here, and you can plug it in, and you can use <laughs> as a hair dryer. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the slot where the air comes out on the old Mac Mini was a little teeny slit, and the new one, it's a huge opening they just have much better airflow they they're, like they're a four inch conduit they yeah. put in there with it the, it's a real good design this is this is the old one by the way you can tell the new one because it's the new ones are like like black they've gone to a black color ah. i called the mac mini pro because it's it's so good it's 
it really actually as good as a Mac Pro was five years ago ah. as a Mac Mini. Wow. Which is just pretty one, impressive. One tenth the size. Yeah. How, so how, how much? About, I mean, you can start at like 750 okay. and you're probably good. If you're going to be doing a lot of video editing, you got to crunch a lot of video, maybe even 4K video, then you want to go upgrade to one that's going to be about 1100 bucks. Okay. Even then, not too crazy, not too hard on the wallet. And, uh, and all you need is a flat screen. All you need is a, is a monitor. Right. And I just set one up uh, with a, an LG 21 by 9 ultra wide monitor for Joseph Briano and, uh, and, and actually Paul Pape, both. And uh, it works beautifully with those big wide screens. So, cool. you know, it's, I'm, I'm thrilled with it. So I think you're going to be happy when you get yours. I can't wait. You got a little upgrade on yours, right? You got the i5 quintup. No, sex. It's, it's the it's the i five. Six it, core. It's the six core i five. Six core i five, and then it's with, a, with sixteen gigabytes. Sixteen of RAM. gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, it well, comes with eight. With, you got the one with handlebars. <laughs> yeah. I already have the handlebars, the, so it's. It, I mean, Whoa. honestly, the base model has the base model is eight gigs of RAM. It's or memory. It's it's enough for the majority of you. Yeah. But if you're multitasking like crazy, video editing, all this stuff, the extra memory would be appreciated. If you're editing massive 30 megabyte raw video or photo files, you'll appreciate the extra memory. Right. You can upgrade the memory. What Here's what Apple does. They're stinkers. You can actually <laughs> upgrade the memory. Yay. But, but the old Mac, you just popped off the lid. Sorry about that. Yeah, pop off the lid and the memory was right there. You can get to it easily. On the new one, they install a little metal uh, fence. <laughs> it, there's yeah, a border, security fence. There's a border wall over the RAM. Yeah. And, you gotta, <laughs> and you have to take this thing completely apart to change the RAM on the new one. It's not horribly scary to do, but it's 17 steps when instead of two. Right. Um, so you can do it. It's just not as easy. So if you think you need the RAM and you don't want to pay for it later, get it now. It'll be already in there painless. Oh, so, okay. Anyway, it's a good machine. If you want the horsepower, go for yeah. it. Now, last week you talked about getting pwned. Pwned, yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. the latest? We on talked that? about pwning or getting pwned. So I mentioned last week, and let me remind myself what that was called. There's a web. Mm, it's it's President's Day. Everybody's <laughs> tooling around in their warbirds. <laughs> Sorry about True. the noise. That's an old one. Um, have I been pwned.com? I mentioned this. Pwned is, is geek speak for owned. And owned means have you been hacked and does somebody have access to your data? Um, and I mentioned a website, Have I Been Pwned? And I'm wondering if anybody actually did go on to Have I Been Pwned, typed in their email or password, and found your information was leaked on the internet. So if that's oh, you, wow. put something in the, in the Facebook or the YouTube comments. Let us know, you know what websites you found out were leaking your information because that's the kind of stuff mm. you can find out on have i been pwned wow that's All right. amazing yeah i don't know that i want that information you may not want, you may not yeah. want it yeah your chances are you're going to type in a password that you you use on every website that you're too lazy to make a new one and it's yep. going to be on some database out there that is wow. in the public uh, so um check that out i'm wondering if any of you guys have gotten i've checked uh, on there to see um, the, Stein, the Steinberg UR12. Yeah, I've probably mentioned this one on the show. Do you remember me bringing this thing? No, up? it's the first okay. time I've heard this. I mean, a lot of us... Doesn't mean I was listening, but... <laughs> <laughs> we, we love the Focus, right? Um, the Scarlet. Scarlet Solo, the 2i2. Right. right. Um, and they're great. And they have a new Gen 2 version. It's greater. It's got better headphones and everything. But it's still missing this one feature. And somehow Steinberg thought, well, we'll write a driver that nobody else has. For our thing, what it does is it allows you to have loop back. Right. So you just pop in a, a little window. It's going to be in system preferences, blah, blah, blah. It's buried under a few things. But once you have that window open, if you check the box, you now have loop back. So if you have that need to you know, make a client happy who really has to have playback in their studio, they want to hear the last take you did because they were on Snapchat when they were directing you, <laughs> you're going to want to have something like uh, the ability back, to play yeah. back. Now, right. there's a million ways to do this. You know, you can hold your <coughs> headphones up to the phone. Um, you can turn up your speakers. There's a lot of ways to do this. But if you have it set up with this, it's a little checkbox. Right. Turn it on. And now when you hit play, 
They're going to hear whatever you play back on Skype or Zoom or right. whatever phone system you're using on your computer. Right. Well, like on a Yamaha AGO3 or 6, so it's just a little switch. Yes. switch. Why is not Steinberg, who are Yamaha and one of the same, yeah, they why have they not it. put that on there as an actual physical switch? Yeah, there? well, I think maybe because when they bought the, I'm, here's my theory. Okay. They bought the Yamaha company. They had now the AGO3 in their, in their you know in their arsenal right. and they saw there's a demand for this lodge this loopback thing but rather right. than go back to the drawing board and redesign the ur12 their smart brainiac guys were like we can drive make a driver that does that so they just made it a software thing ah. is it as convenient as a flicking of a switch no definitely not but if you already have a ur12 or the ur22 any of those variances that feature is already there you probably didn't even know it and it's just Kind of a cool bonus. All right. I mean, 100 bucks, you get an interface with a mic preamp, a good headphone app, and that function. And it, it's it's a good piece of gear. Sounds good. Right. Now, what happened with Skype? I don't use Skype anymore. I mean, I have it, but I don't use it. But I guess there was a problem on Valentine's Day. It just seemed to be that it timing. Overwhelmed when you called grandma for Valentine's <laughs> Day, I guess. And, well, it's, I don't know. It just was the timing of it. Maybe that was the first day I'd used Skype in a couple of days, but whatever the case may be. I was one of those holdouts using Skype 7 point whatever it was, 7.6. And I was telling everybody, stick with 7, 8 stinks, they broke it, blah, 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 blah. Well, they, there was rumors that they were eventually going to basically deprecate it or basically kill the functionality of 7. And that's basically what they did, I found out. The thing was you had to kind of do some research to figure out what was going on. Instead of it saying, sorry, you're going to have to upgrade to keep working, you would start Skype, it would log in, it would you'd see your contacts, everything, and then within two seconds, it would log you back out again and say, you need to verify your account information. Ooh. You'd go through all of that, and then it would still then it would give you a little error message with a sad face saying, We're sorry, we can't log you in. Right. No explanation. Right. No nothing saying you must upgrade to version eight. Right. So the way I found out that it was the wrong version was by, you know, this is what you do in these days and age. You tweet. So I tweeted Skype support, and I was like, hey, guys, what the hell is going on with version blah, blah, blah? And they said, sir, have you updated to the latest version? Of course. Of course. Of course they're yes. going to say that. So I did. I updated, and yes, indeed, that fixed the problem. The good news is that it's been long enough now since 8 came out that they have fixed all the problems, pretty much. They they put back into features. They removed. They fix the preferences window you can now actually choose which microphone you're using and speakers there's a little meter now where they got rid of all these things they put them all back so now it ain't so bad being stuck on skype 8 it works i i know there's other things there's zoom there's uh, all these other tools i just i have a skype phone number and that's just mm. kind of where i run everything i i, I just, just use my phone i just <laughs> I want to call my mom. I use this. You know. Well, I do a lot of support. So I'll be on the phone with them and then they'll say, let me Skype you. And I'll go, go ahead. And then they Skype me and I'm, I don't have to do a thing. It just, now that I'm on, now I'm on yeah. Skype. It's just seamless. Grab the microphone there, Scott, because I guess our guest engineer has a comment. I, uh, <laughs> your guest <engineer>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use Skype ex almost exclusively for coaching Yeah. Uh, because of the same thing. I'm not smart. So I want to touch it and have it go. And it makes that great little. Da, 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 the little mm -hmm. song and then there's my person so yeah <laughs> come on uh so yeah i like that i've used zoom before when i'm doing multiple people yeah, i would yeah. like it if skype had a multiple person uh format but i don't it does but it's just not thought out as well yeah as zoom well. works really well for zoom groups. Is, yeah zoom yeah. is a is a is a conferencing tool skype is a chatting phone you know void video chatting tool yeah. that has conferencing as sort of a feature but it's not well implemented i bet a, a bunch of your work is on skype yeah you need to you need is. to see what the hell you're you know yeah i mean yeah. i do it on skype i use a remote screen access something called screen connect mm. i use a couple different things but um at the end of the day skype is so ubiquitous so i can almost guarantee that the other person probably has it and that they've probably sure. used yeah. it so and is who that does what ubiquitous it? means Yes, I was. I'm so Thanks. glad you so came tonight. Got you by <laughs> ubiquitous. <laughs> Alrighty. 
<laughs> well, we we were at Nam a couple of weeks ago. We were, and we the convention, not yes. the war. Yes, we were there, man. You yes. don't know what Nam was I, like. I, and I was hoping Peter Coyote could narrate these, but it yeah. it just didn't happen. There but, was one more thing. Oh, 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 He's this. Oh, this, oh, I'm thing. sorry, I I missed something. There was one more thing. Wow, look at that. If thing. you're looking ah. for fast but affordable external storage for your computer, look which you that. probably are. This is a SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. So this is Extreme. basically, yeah, it's a flash drive, but you know, you plug it into a USB 3 or USB 2 port. Oh, and it also plugs into all the new Macs ooh, with the little USB C oh, port. Ooh, ah, so it's got shiny. a little adapter. Yeah, shiny. And um, it's, it's really fast. So like I, I plugged it into my MacBook Air, which is a 2013, I think. How much and does it hold? <laughs> this is a, a little baby one. It's only 500 gigabytes, which sounds like a lot, but by today's standards, it's not. But 500 gigabytes. And that's something that big? Yeah, 90 bucks. You want your, I'll turn your mic on now because, Miranda, I have that mic turned off. So. How much does it cost? But How much does it cost? So a 500 $90. gig one like this is about 90-ish bucks, right. and they go up from there pretty quick, but All you right. get them up to four terabytes. Cool. Wow. Fast. Oh, geez. Um, and it, you can beat on this thing <clears throat> like that and it's not going to crash because yeah, it's but not but why would you but why would you that was what i just did that was dumb <laughs> <laughs> don't do that today's dumb moment <laughs> today's dumb <laughs> moment <laughs> brought to you Sand Sand yes all righty anyway it's a good piece all right beautiful man so we were at nam and had a great time five six seven open the pearly gates okay. that's right uh <laughs> boy you know that one don't ask me i don't <laughs> give a damn, damn. Right. anyway uh, but we well, talked to a bunch of cool people, and uh, the first one of the first videos we want to show is with our good friends at Studio Bricks, and uh, I got to talk to uh, Miguel. You did. Let's play that. Once again, we're here at NAM 2019 here in Anaheim, and we're here with our good friends at Studio Bricks. And we're here with Miguel. Nice Hi. to see you again. Nice to see you again. Wow. I, we had such fun putting that Studio Bricks together in Las Vegas at WovoCon this year. It was easy and it sounded great. Thank you. Really glad to hear that. Yeah. What is it that makes Studio Bricks so different from all the other uh, booths that we see out there? Well, this is, you know, as we spoke, you know, this is our fifth year in a, in, a, in a row here in, in the NAMSO. So and we are this year we are coming with this Studio Bricks One voiceover edition. And what is making this product different? You know, this is like a big Lego. It's really fun to assemble the booth. Uh, the, the quality of the product is, you know, the, 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 the quality of the walls. Uh, this is like MDF varnish right. that makes a really big difference because you know the other booth they are they have this carpeting around and we don't have that right. and then we are using this kind of fancy acoustic panels and as I told you this is the, the voiceover edition it coming with this kind of amazing yellow tech micro, microphone arm oh, yes and the, you know we'll go inside here yeah yeah here, here's the biggest part of this though. It's this vault door that they have on here. It weighs a ton, but it's the real secret to sealing up this booth. Yeah, yeah. yeah the door is unimportant, you yeah. know. Here, it's really let me, important. Let's, let's take the one mic so we can talk wirelessly. Okay, perfect. All right. So we'll close the door in here. We and, seal. And we, we seal the door so no one can get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, we hear just a little bit of rumble from, you know, the air conditioning maybe, but you're not going to have that in a normal studio. Yeah. Uh, but the sound in here doesn't bounce around at all. It, you know, you've got these great little lights that fit right inside the, uh, let's see if you can get a shot of that, George. The lighting strip that fits inside the, the, acoustic, the, the panel. acoustic paneling here. Yeah. And, you know, a desk that goes on here. And as you were saying, the yellow tech arm that's really nice. So you've got, and there's plenty of room in here for yeah. doing voiceover. Yeah, even is, is the, this is the smallest one, you know, because this is the Studio Bricks one, three by four inside. Right. And I have a lot of, you know, reviews from um, our customers saying that, you know, even this is a three by four, 
you cannot feel trapped inside of the booth. You know, I, well, two of us. It's a little yeah, close, but it's, not, it's, not, it's yeah. not bad. <laughs> yeah, but you got the big bass trap back up in here, and that reduces a lot of the standing waves really, really well. But it's beautifully constructed. It's heavy duty. You know, it, they're not the least expensive, but totally worth it if you're in a fairly noisy environment. Yeah, and, uh, we really like them. What is it that you really like about, about your product? Well, I really like the style of the product, also the quality of the sound side, you know, and the, the, the materials we are using, we are using like this, we are improving always with different kind of uh, eco-friendly materials. Yeah. This is like water-based paints. And also, you know, we are always like improving our products, mm, looking for different kind of solutions, really eco-friendly with the environment. And yeah, we are always, you know, like keeping, keep going, and that's that is our main goal. Yeah. Now you're you're located in Spain, so they get shipped over from Spain. So it's like everybody waits in anticipation as this big box shows up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we see this big box, and it was like, well, why don't we just put the box in the corner and tell everybody this is the booth? <laughs> but no, we opened it up and. We and I guess you put together one for Joe Cipriano yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. You were fun, too. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a fun project. It's like working with Legos. Yeah, working with Lego, <laughs> a little bit, you know. A little bit bigger. Uh, bigger and <laughs> heavier than, you know, than the regular Lego, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, it also has a ventilation system. You've got this unit yeah. down here. Yes, we have the aeropack there. It's super quiet. Right now it's working, but you not, you cannot hear. But Thank you very much. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. And I hope to see you next year. Indeed, those are they really make a great product. I mean, and it's very, very different from what the other guys are doing. Yeah, I mean, the the amount of effort that went in designing and constructing this thing is kind of mind-boggling. He showed us pictures of the factory. Yeah. It is massive. Now, keep in mind, the voiceover segment for them is small. It's like, a little tiny. They yeah. put them in these They're places musicians. called uh, WeWork. Maybe you've heard of WeWork. <laughs> They're those group workspaces. WeedWork? WeedWork, yeah. In LA, place, we man. renamed them to WeedWork in LA, <laughs> man. Uh, but WeWork has bought over a thousand of them, I think. So right. they've... You sell a lot of them. It's Didn't pretty. Cipriano I mean, just build in the Joe Cipriano's got one. He he just happened to be. <laughs> he happened to get his delivery the same week they were they visiting were town, from yeah. out of town, oh. and they physically came over oh. and helped us put it together. That was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a quick thing. You just like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, so I mean, it, it takes okay. longer to get it out of the box than it does yeah, to, take was, it to put it together. Yeah, it's like okay, how do we do this? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, the once you got nice. it. Uh, now the other thing we looked at was uh, something new from Epigee. The Epigee Hype. That's right. It's which is the, a very, you know, if you're used to like the Epigee mic, which a lot of people have, uh, yes. which is great to have on your road, they've got something new. Let's take a look at that. This is a, this is a new product here at NAMM 2019 by our friends at Epigee, and uh, it's called the Epigee Hype mic. And if you're familiar with the Epigee mic, this is a, uh, it's, it's there, it's a more advanced version of it, but what, what it has is a lot of forward processing. Not that I'm a big fan of forward processing, but for something simple, it works on your iPad and you, you can adjust the EQ, you can adjust the pitch, you can add compression to it, yeah, but doing stuff like that. You know, you can add, uh, you know, you can use, uh, you know, some reverb on it. And I guess that's supposed to simulate a tube drive. And uh, it's actually kind of cool. If this is the kind of thing that you want to be able to do, if you're using any front, front end processing. Uh, of course, I like to keep things dry. But if you're somebody that has to do a little bit of this kind of stuff, or if you're doing music, it actually could probably be very useful. But you see this thing, it's just this tiny little thing, but it also has a much better visual view meter on it, which, uh, you know, it's not just a, a little one little green light that flashes. Now it's, it's at least giving you an accurate level. But I'm sure it's still 
not very forgiving for plosives. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but how, how well does this work? Peter Piper picked a peck of art. Well, that helps a little bit. But it's a nice unit. And uh, what are these things going for now? These are... Uh, this is nice. This, this design. Yeah, it's a the way that pop screen um, wraps around and then it the pop screen screws onto the rear of the mic. Yeah, actually, that is kind of interesting. Yeah, that's a good design. That's but a here's good. another interesting thing about it. It works with Windows. Ah, with Windows. Not just Mac only. Yeah, so you're seeing more cross compatibility now from Apogee. Which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, more, more flexible. Anyway, you might want to look at something like this. You want to have some fun with a little mic. It's the Epigee Hype mic. I could see it being good for podcasters, maybe even more so. As for podcasting, it would probably be excellent. And when you put up in front of somebody who doesn't have a good vocal technique, that way you can deal with their, you know, their up and down volume when they're really exactly. pushing too loud exactly. and stuff like that. So. Cool. All right. All cool. right, the Epigee Hype. Epigee. Thank you, Dan. That's what I do. Now that thing's a little pricey. Uh, I mean, it's it's three fifty for that. I need to figure out if those extra bells and whistles are worth a real it. benefit. Yeah. I think you know. Again, I'm always talking about high pass filters. It has one, so if that works well, it could be worthwhile. I don't know. We'll we'll get one in the demo. Apogee, you know how to find us. We've only met you probably thirty seven times. They're so. just on the other side of the hill here. So. I don't know. They're right in Santa Monica. Right. So anyway, I. You know, the headphone jack's cool. The, the Apogee Mic Plus has that for about $100 less if you need that kind of a feature. So, you know, the hype, is it worth the hype? It's a pretty bold statement to call their product the hype. No. Let's we'll demo it, it and see. Yeah. All righty. Well, if you probably figured out that George and I know an awful lot about home voiceover studios by now. See, we've only been doing this show since, what, 2011? Has it been that long? It has been. It's almost eight years Wow. In March, I'll drink juice to that. I, I, actually, I think that's I think that's an excellent idea. It seems like a decade. Salute. Yeah. Almost a couple couple of couple of donuts short of a decade. But uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, if you want help with your home studio, I mean, you can watch our show and you can pick up a tip here or there. But it always helps to work with guys that have been in the trenches and been doing this stuff for years. I mean, and, at some point, and also it's know what's. The trend is now. What's happening now? You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could find people that used to do it 15, 20 years ago, but you guys are you guys are in the in the trenches every freaking day. It seems like it. Yeah. Some days you dress like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want help with your home studio, there's only two places you can go. You could work with George, and the way you do that is by you go over to georgethetech.com or the short version. Yep. Short George the dot tech, um, and uh, that's where you can find me. You can book services with me. You can do virtual processing stacks. You can do a, a sound check, um, or you can book time. Just good old fashioned phone call if you like to work that way. Whatever you want, head on over there. And if you'd like to work with Dan in his world, in his corner of the web, you can go on over to... You can find me right here at homevoiceoverstudio.com, uh, where I you know, I do a lot of the same things, work a lot with beginners, help them really get the understanding of what it is that you have to do to start your home voiceover studio. Yeah. And uh, Or if you're someone that's already set up their studio and you want to hear what it sounds like, I've got my world-famous specimen collection cup sitting at the bottom of the page. Click on that for <laughs> 25 bucks and I will analyze your audio. And if you need some help, we'll work it it's out. It's for audio, Scott. Oh, uh, oh yes, oh, only say. for audio. I need a, a studio <laughs> intervention bad. I need a studio <laughs> intervention badly, so I'm oh. hoping for that. We're, we're, we're working on that. <laughs> anyway, we've got a bunch of questions from our amazing audience, so we'll be right back to answer those right after these important messages. <laughs> Hi, this is Kat Cressida, and this is VoiceOver Body Shop. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. 
and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo 2 gos free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need. All in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to gos David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. I can see that we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop. We got questions from our, our audience. They're out there all across the Fruited Plain and all across God's Green Earth. And uh, what are some of the questions we have? What, let, let's, there was one that was, there were a couple that were mailed in. So we'll start with Catherine Campion's question. Awesome. Uh, and and as, you, as you bring that one up, I'm, I'm finding more. Okay. Because now more, they're all just piling in. More keep coming in. All righty. She says, uh, I'm pretty secure in the overall sound quality of my studio. In the past 10 years, I've only had one client comment on my audio quality, and it was back when I was using a USB mic into a noisy laptop. All right, well, she lucked out. Uh, it's just occasional noise from heating equipment, cars going by, mouth clicks, etc., that I'd love to reduce, eliminate more easily than tackling one noise at a time. I invested in Isotope RX-7 Elements and can't for the life of me find a tutorial that actually teaches me how to use it. I record in Twisted Wave, import the MP3 into RX Elements, click Repair Assistant, and each time it tells me no significant clipping, clicks, hum, noise, even when I know there was noise from the washing machine, Boiler Street, Boiler Street, my mouth. She has a boiler? Well, she must live in the Northeast. Uh, Actually, I think she lives in L.A. Really? I, I, I've worked with her, so I know personally uh, that she's got good, good audio. Okay, and, right. Well, it offers good. three levels of repair options, all of which sound identical to the original. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong, and do I need to invest in yet another thing well what you're doing wrong is relying on an automatic thing to do something that you can't really i don't think you can do automatically yet presets are nice but yeah it's it only takes you so far i think i think if your issues are are on the more I, I, well, let me start by saying i have not used that tool yet 
okay. have not used. I this, haven't either. This wizard. So I, I don't know if it's because your your particular situation you're having a problem, or if it's just something that doesn't work well for everybody. But I will assume that it's not working well because your issues are all too subtle for it to pick up. That's my guess. Like they're all there, and to the trained voice actor's ear, they're all quite audible. But to the whatever algorithms in this thing, somebody listening on their iPad, enough. they ain't gonna hear it. Yeah, yeah, they're they're probably not severe enough. So yeah. so you're asking a tutorial. Yeah, I don't know many tutorials that explain how to fine tune these tools. Right. Um, I. You do the only way ear. I know to do is by ear. Yeah. You know, I if you don't know what to do, maybe you can start by putting all of the sliders. It has a couple different controls. Yeah. I'm thinking about the noise, the declicker, for example. Start with them somewhere in the middle. Right. Then start incrementally moving one of them at a time, not all of them, but one at a time to the left or to the right and see if you can notice a change in what you're doing. Um, that is how I start using something I've never used before. I go, well... If I move sensitivity really far to the right, what happens? Does it get worse or better? Right. And that, that's because a lot of tools, it's not that clear what these things are going to do. And you just, you have to trust your hearing. Right. Um, at the end of the day. And fortunately, the tools in RX, uh, the RX tools for the most part, the declicker, the denoiser, they're, they're relatively simplified. They don't have 15 different controls you have to play with. They have three or four settings, and so it doesn't take more than maybe 15 minutes to dial in a setting. Again, you have to use your ears. You've got to use some good headphones or really good studio monitors, but you should be able to find changes in those settings after you play with them for a while. Right, but then and also, again, you've got to know what it's supposed to sound like. And, yeah. And if you overdo it, it's going. You're going to notice it, well, and sometimes someone's going to notice it. And sometimes people are overly sensitive to their own little sound issues. Right. Voice actors. This can happen very commonly. Once the old saying, "Well, I can't unhear it." You know, once you've heard it, you can't unhear it. I can't unsee it. Um, <laughs> once you start hearing a mouth click or a sibilance, that's a big one. Sibilance. Voice actors are really sensitive to their sibilance. Maybe one client ever says, "You're sibilant," and then now. You're always sibilant for the rest of your life, no matter what you Forget think. Forget about it. Yeah, don't really. do, don't get too sensitive to that stuff because especially your own headphones could be totally fooling you, making you sound way more sibilant than you actually are. Yeah. So playback is a significant thing, yeah. and uh, you know, and I and I'm like, sounds fine to me in my studio on my expensive speakers and my monitors. So maybe it's what you're listening on. Yeah. Uh, our good buddy Jack Degolia, sitting out there in the desert, who used to write every word that we would say. Yeah. Good guy. Uh, has a question. He says, uh, does room tone mixed in twisted waves, special paste command make existing room tone louder? Mm. Uh, I understood it did not, but I'm getting pushback from voice actors. Well, there's your problem right there who think adding room tone this way will double the volume of the room tone. Something I've not experienced. Well, if you haven't experienced it, it probably isn't a problem. We are not experiencing it because you're using it right. So could be if you use special paste the way that I use special paste in Twisted Wave, you're not mixing room tone in over other sound. You're replacing what's there with room tone. Right. So no, the room tone isn't going to get louder. You're just putting in a sample of your existing room tone and using special paste as a way to paste it over the, the selection. Right. Um, you know, instead of just doing a normal paste. If you do a normal paste, whatever length of the copy was is how long the paste will be. Chances are it's not going to be the right length. But with special paste, if you select a range that you want to replace, boom, it just takes the room tone copied, no matter how long it is, could and, be three seconds, eight seconds. And overrides it. And overrides that yeah. 0.37 second long thing yeah. that you want. So it's, yeah, it's moot. Yeah. It don't does don't not listen happen. to him, Jack. No. It's crazy. They're, they're thinking of the idea of mixing room tone over the track or under the track as it were and yeah I, years ago we talked about this if you take white noise and take other white noise and mix them together if they're both the same volume and you mix them together the volume does not increase by 6 db it does not go up it just sort of doubles itself and it then, just in yeah. increases the density of the right. room tone of the, of the white noise but doesn't go up right um so maybe that's what they're thinking of right. so they're they're wrong not to be worried not to worry yeah uh, Michael Kennedy 
asks, yes, uh, he says, uh, if getting a new Mac Mini, what configuration might you suggest if you go all out with the highest capability, memory and you know, in, in solid state drive, it can add up. Well, I figured that one out myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they charge a lot for each upgrade. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, you know, just going for the 16 gigs of RAM over, I mean, it's like 200 bucks more for an extra 8 gigs of they RAM. Do. And how much is 8 gigs of RAM? But as you explained earlier, it's uh, they've made it hard for you. Oh, boy. Apple, Apple. Yeah. I, I, lo I love their hardware, but they really play games with the pricing, <laughs> what's upgradable, what's not. Uh, they change the what's upgradable from model to model. Right. Uh, you but, know, they make it a little challenging yeah, for us. But still, it's a Mac. You plug it in, and it works. Yeah. I mean, and the majority of the problems that you and I deal with in troubleshooting, generally, it's usually a PC problem. M yeah, it, mostly. It, I mean, you can have audio issues on, on Macs if you're using some really high-end audio gear that right. has special drivers and a control panel and right. all this kind of stuff. Things that's, like, really external to it and... Yeah. yeah, but it's it's less likely on the Mac. I mean, the 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 RAM uh, or memory, as Apple calls it, same thing, RAM memory. Um, they overcharge for it for sure. Uh, the advantage of it is you don't have to upgrade it later. And I've I have upgraded RAM for many people on Macs, and sometimes that third party memory goes bad, or something goes bad, or one of the two chips goes bad, or something. And then that's another problem to troubleshoot. And if you right. get it from Apple, that's probably not going to happen. No guarantee. Um, but uh, basically, the base model, the base base model iMac is a six core i3, which on paper sounds slow because eh. we have an i5 and i7. But in reality, it's quite it's got fast. Got six cores it's in it. It's quite eh? fast yeah. for yeah. for most uses. The the one step up. For about a thousand bucks, twelve maybe eleven hundred is the i5 six core, and that one is really quite fast. And that's what I went for. Yeah, and that is worth the up step up in price because you you know you cannot upgrade the processor. Right. You can upgrade the memory. Go to ifixit.com and you can watch videos on how to upgrade. You can see how long it's going to take, how difficult it is, the every step involved. It's a little scary. Okay, if you have a brand new Mac that's under warranty, you're probably not going to crack it open as your first upgrade. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is doable. Um, in terms of storage, the built-in storage, it starts at 256, I believe. If they have a 128 model, definitely that's much too small for most of us. One, 256 gig is fine for many of us. Yeah. And if you got the scratch, go up to the 512. It might be... Nice to have a little bit extra storage, but again, I was going to say, just like get this, the SanDisk 500, 500 gigs for 90 flash drive. bucks, and this is fast, really fast. It's not that big a deal anymore. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Okay, we got one last question from our dear friend, Debbie Irwin, who's there in New York City, and she, she asks, uh, I'm in need of a reasonably priced DSer. Just keep my eyes open for RX's occasional sales. But what were we just saying? It's probably not that bad. It may yeah, be what she's listening on. Before you buy a DS or let, Debbie, let, let's well, give first it a of lesson. all, get a demo of it yeah. so you can play with it. It's free to get a demo. But definitely, I know you're a pro. You've been doing this a real long time. But you're a pro at hearing your own voice in your own headphones. And you don't know what it's sounding like out of context, more than likely, uh, what it sounds like to everybody else. And maybe that one client complained about your sibilance. Send it to one of us. We're going to listen to it in our familiar environment, in our familiar headphones. We'll we'll tell you. And right. A lot of times, sibilance can be corrected with just a simple just a little EQ, EQ curve, a yeah. little dip right in that sibilance range, and not much else is required. If it's only needed for really severe, I call it ice pick in the forehead sibilance, e. where it's like thung, you're like ah, yeah. you know, that, and that's, that's probably more of a, a function of microphone and mic technique than anything else. It's sometimes correct. Sometimes it is oh. already. There's a few more questions. Were we going to wrap or? I think we're going to wrap and questions? we'll save them for next time. And, uh, okay. Lots of questions and we're running out of time. But anyway, right. uh, we've got to come back and say goodbye and mop up after this mess. So right. we'll be right back after this. This is Bill Ratner and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, look at that. There's VoiceOver Essentials company mascot, Lila the Dog, sunbathing on Turtle Beach in front of a Porta Booth Pro on spring break with her spiffy free VO, as heard on TV baseball cap. Yep, 
VOBS viewers only can get their famous voiceover cap, which is a 1995 value, free when they order their Porta Bruth Pro. Never miss a session or audition, even while taking a well deserved spring break. You can just add the Porta Bruth Pro and the voiceover baseball cap in your cart and then put the promo code PBPRO cap in the promo code field and click the submit promo code button to get their discount for the cap. Both items are on the home page. The Porta Booth is at the top and the cap near the bottom of the page. All you have to do is go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Just go down to the bottom of our home page. You'll find it there and order your Porta Booth Pro now and get your free baseball cap. Thanks, Harlan. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Well, this is the point in the show where I have to talk about source elements because they're one of our wonderful sponsors and they make some really cool stuff, primarily Source Connect. That's the tool for voice actors that need to be able to record from their studio to other studios all around the globe. And they've got support as well all around the globe. So chances are, if you're logged on to Source Connect, one beautiful thing about them is they have live support technicians available to you because they're multinational. I mean, their headquarters is in Chicago, but also in New Zealand. So they cross time zones and they got you covered no matter where you are. So go check out Source Connect right now. And the way you do that is you go to source-elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial. You can get Source Connect Standard, the version that you should be using as voiceover actors these days. Get Source Connect Standard demo for 15 days right away and start using it. Get accustomed to it. Learn how to use the iLock. Get the license set up. Get your system rocking and rolling. And then that day that a session comes along and they want you on Source Connect, you're ready to pull the trigger. You're ready to go. You don't even have to buy it that day. You can do it as a demo. Keep it for a few months. For the day you need it, you can pay for it. It's great. So if you want to give them a try, you know where to go, source-elements.com, and tell them we sent you. Thanks so much for your support. And we'll be right back with more Tech Talk. Ooh. I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did! I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. Back to say goodbye. Yes, we are. Uh, next week on this show, well, in two weeks, on the 18th, right. Kiff Vandenhoeven will be here. Oh, cool. Another one of those guys who I see, you're watching TV and it's like, oh, there's Kiff. TVs and movies. Yeah. He, he plays cops. Yes. He just happens to get he has that I look like a cop kind of guy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but he does a lot more than that. You right. Get to find out. And he does voiceover, to. and he was doing his voiceover podcast, too. So we'll mm -hmm. be talking to him about that. Super cool, nice guy. Oh, yeah. Um, who are our donors of the week? I've noticed many, and we really appreciate it. Yeah. Let's go, let's go take a dab in the donor's box. And this is where we should have the donor's music that I can play to kill time while I go look up the dun, donor. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, we, dun, have dun, dun, dun. we have donors. We have donors. We have lots dun, dun, and dun, lots dun, of donors. Uh, Michael Kennedy. Thank thanks, you, Michael. Mike. We answered his question and he gave us some money. What a guy. Whoa, thanks a lot, brother. That was very generous of you. Um, Andrew Kaufman, he is one of our subscribers, sends money in uh, on a regular basis because he's subscribing using the subscribe function that PayPal has built in. Um, Philip Sapir, thank you. Uh, keeping down the list. Uh, that's a sponsor, so that's even better. Uh, Sarah Borges, you can, anyway, anybody can sponsor, sponsor the show, yeah. by if the you, way. If there's you something you'd like to special. advertise to the voiceover community, we're here for yeah, you. We're here. Uh, Sarah Borges, uh, thank you. 
Uh, CJ Ringwall. Thank you, CJ. Um, Michael Blanker. Oh, man, that's not Michael. I'm sorry. Michelle. Michelle. My apologies. Blanker. Michelle. I know Michelle. Michelle. Kill uh, <laughs> Antland Productions. And Graham Spicer. Thanks, Graham. Brian Roush. And Joseph Harrison. And man, there's a lot of names. I told you there was a lot Burns. this week. Holy smokes. Thank you so many. So many of you are com- helping to boost the show up a little bit with uh, Maria Mackis as well. All right. So, yeah, it's been wonderful. We really appreciate all these contributions. They just help us boost up the show a little bit more, fill in the gaps when we need gear and keep things up to date, software updates, all this stuff. And it really is helpful. So, Which is why we look so damn good. <laughs> yes. No, anyway, that would probably be. Uh, yes. We'd like you to show us your booths. Uh, this is CJ Ringwall's booth. I mean, let's see if we can. Yeah, there's his speaker. Yeah, we were thinking, well, it looks like, you know, we just got moving blankets like behind us. Can I put my head on that? Yeah. Went to the Harbor Freight, got moving blankets. They work right. There we go. There we got are. a good view of it. Okay. We can see everything that's in there. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, those, those, they do look like Harbor Freight blankets, don't they? Oh, def- um, definitely. They work. They do. You have enough layers of those things. And They're- I think one thin layer of blanket isn't quite cutting it for most people. Double them up, though, and you're getting there. You, and for the price, well. you can't beat that. <laughs> Crazy cheap. Absolutely. Nice job. Thanks for sending in your picture. We do yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, send them in to theguysatvobs.tv in landscape, not portrait. Okay. Um, again, if you want to talk to George and have him help you with your home studio, you go to... The Tech. George. Georgethetech.com. <laughs> It doesn't matter with me. Uh, yeah, that's where you go to find me. And Dan is also available online for tech support over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yes. I'm there all the time. I just live in my studio. Mm. My wife comes in and says, You're never leaving here, are you? That's why we put the beer keg in here. That's right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, we're here on Alternate Mondays Live, but we're also doing Tech Talk. We're taking this segment and we will replay this next week. The This amazing interview with. With Scott uh, Parkin will be mm-hmm. all this week, so mm-hmm. that that'll be really cool. Mm-hmm. Want to be in our studio like Gary is today? Let's get a shot of Gary here. That's Gary. There's His name Gary. Is Gary. Gary. They call him Gary. There's Gary, Gary in the corner there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all you have to do is write to us again at the guys at vobs TV and tell us what when you're in town or when you can be here, and we'll give you the secret handshake and maybe give you the address. Maybe give you the right address. In and out order. That's right. Uh, okay, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. And VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. <laughs> vo to go VoeActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. I'm Isn't working, that guy everywhere? I things? know. I'm working with him tomorrow. We're cutting a new announcer demo tomorrow. Oh, very good. That'll be great. Announcing. I hear it's coming back. That's why I'm doing a demo. That's the rumor. That's right. We're doing an announcer demo. And not ironically either. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'd like to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Webcasting. Also, our producer, Catherine Curden, for getting great guests for us like Scott Parkin and Kit Vanden Heuvel in two weeks. Uh, Mike Merlino wasn't in chat room duty. It was you and Sue were doing the chat room tonight. Yeah. Mike's exactly. doing more important things. <laughs> Like How dare he? Big, the big time stuff in Hollywood. <laughs> uh, and uh, also our amazing technical director who just was par excellence tonight, Sue Merlino. Yeah, Sue. Mike's mom. Mike's mom. Yeah. Let's so just anyway. change the credit. That's right. So that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We're here, well, it seems like every week, but you'll find us here on YouTube or on Facebook or all those other places. Podcasting. We're here. We're everywhere. Just type V-O-B-S yeah, and you'll, you'll find us. You'll find us or some organization that's V-O-B-S acronym. But anyway, Good luck that's going to do it for us this week. We know it's not an easy business, but we're here to help. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yes. Take care, everybody. Bye. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there. 
in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com.